going through the announcements tab, I want to talk about how to navigate the course. So this is not specifically included in the reading, but I think that it makes it a little bit more self-explanatory. When you look at the class, we have a vertical column of what I'm going to call tabs and a horizontal row of buttons. The only reason I've included both is because I can't modify the ones on the left. I can't create new buttons for what I want them for. All I can do is turn the buttons on or off. You'll see all these gray uh, tabs on the left hand side. You won't see them when you log into your course because I've turned them off. I've turned them off because I feel like if I include them, you'll feel like you need to click on them because we're using them. And so with a limited number of tabs on the left hand side, even if you get lost, you only have to click through like five things before you can find what you're looking for. So the tabs on the left hand side are the home tab, which will take you to the home page, the announcements tab, which we covered in the last video. There is a syllabus tab, grades tab, and chat, and then you will not see the option to submit final grades. That's a teacher thing. The syllabus you should read through. It's long. It's, it's thorough. It's probably boring to read, but there's a lot of um, important information and syllabi are legally binding contracts. So I can't say my expectation are, is one thing in this, on the syllabus, but then grade you on something different. So if we take a look over here on the right hand side, it says that your grade is made up of 50% from the skills based assignments that we will complete throughout the semester. If I decide to make the grade 100% based on skills based assignments, you can argue that your grades invalid and you want a new grade calculated. I won't do that because I have it all set up in Canvas to automatically calculate your grade, but that's something that's important. One of the key things that happens or tends to happen that students will be frustrated about, not in my class because I would never do it, but like your final project is worth 5% of your grade. And if nobody submits that final project, the teacher might say, well, I'm taking 20% off for anybody who didn't do that final project. But if the syllabus says it's only worth 5%, your grade can only go from 100 down to a 95 or from an 80 down to a 75 because it's only worth 5% of your grade. I would like you to read through the syllabus in detail. It might take a while. It might take you a few weeks to do it. But by the time we get to, let's say, the start of week three, you should have read through the syllabi and you can email me if you have any questions. I'm going to pull out a couple key things. The first are office hours. Because I teach a lot of on-campus and online classes, I like to host both online and on-campus office hours. You're welcome to attend either of them, even though you're registered for an online class. My online office hours will be every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8.30 to 9.30 via the chat tab in the course. And I'll talk about that when I get to that tab. And then I'm going to have on-campus office hours which are in my office, but they'll probably end up just being in the classroom. So my office is 1-173B, which is inside the 1-173 classroom. They'll be every Monday and Wednesday from 3.30 to 4.30. I have a class from, three, from 1 to 3.20 on Monday, Wednesdays inside that same classroom. My classes tend to stay after class to either work or ask questions, and that's perfectly okay, but it doesn't mean that you can't come in. You can enter the classroom as soon as that class ends at 3.20 if you'd like to. Grading in our class has a unique grading scheme that might not be the same as the other courses that you're taking, so make sure that you understand. If your expectation is, I need to get an A in this class, make sure you know that you need a 93% or higher. Also, you'll notice that there's no minuses after an A minus. I don't like giving out minuses, so I just don't do it. So you'll see that the instead of having a B and a B minus, all those percentages are just raked into a B. The reason you need 93% or higher in all of my classes is that my classes are graphic communications courses. Graphic communications is the technical side of graphic design. It's production art. It is black and white, it's on or off, it's right or wrong. And so we're going to be setting files up for technical output and your activity is either right or it's wrong. It either is functioning the way it's supposed to or it's not. Um, and so what I like to do is allow you to resubmit your artwork over and over again until you get 100. And so even if you get a 70 on the first project, you can fix it and resubmit it as many times as you need until you earn 100% on the project. So there's no reason that everyone in this class can't earn an A if they're willing to fix and resubmit until everything is correct. Okay, late policy is important, especially for online classes. I have 
what I feel is a very flexible late policy for my courses. Um, in ART 1280, you can submit late until the last day of the semester, which for the fall 2019 semester will be Wednesday, December 11th. At midnight that night, everything will lock and you cannot submit anything else. But up until that point, you can submit anything you want late. The only um, negative is that you'll lose 10%. And I think that's pretty generous. 10% off, whether you're you know 20 minutes late or 20 weeks late, well, you can't be 20 weeks late. So 20 minutes late or 10 weeks late, um, you'll just have 10% taken off for it being late. If you get your work in on time and then you fix and resubmit, it's not considered late. So if something's due on Thursday the 6th and you submit it by the 6th and then you have to fix and resubmit eight times, every time after that, you'll get a notice from Canvas that you are making a late submission. But as long as the original submission was on time, I won't be docking it for being late. The only exception to this policy is the midterm exam. We do not have a traditional midterm and final. We essentially have an early final. So we don't take a midterm at week eight. Instead, we take a midterm around week 12 or 13, and it's an early final, and you cannot submit that late. You have from 8 a.m. on Monday morning until 11.59 p.m. on Saturday night, the week that we take our air quote midterm um, to submit that, and no late submissions are accepted. You should read through the course learning objectives. Course learning objectives are meant to be broad objectives, generalized objectives for the course. More importantly, if you scroll down, you'll see that we've broken the course into a series of modules. Art 1200 has 13 modules if you count um, the pre-module 00. And each module has a certain set of learning objectives. These are going to mean more to you than the broad ones. So if you're going to read one or the other, read the module specific objectives. What we're going to do is use the module objectives to meet the course objectives. I'm going to see there's quite a few modules in the course. The last thing I want to point out are the important dates for the semester. So if you um, are thinking that you may or may not want to stay in the class, the last day to drop the class with 100% refund is September 13th, and the last day to withdraw where you'll get no refund is October 25th. If you withdraw from the course anytime between September 11th and October 25th, you get some percentage of your tuition back. I just don't know how much that is. What's important to know about that is that a drop is different from a withdrawal, and you as a student should know that. If you drop a course, it's as if it never existed. It just disappears from your transcript. If you withdraw from a course, you will have a W on your transcript forever. And it's not a problem. You can have a, a, a W here or there. But if you have like three or four Ws every semester for your entire academic career, it's going to raise a red flag to future employers. Or if you want to go to a, get your bachelor's degree one day and you're trying to get admitted into a university or eventually into a grad school or something like that, you don't want to have 500 withdrawals on your transcript. So you want to try to avoid that. Okay. The last... Two tabs are the grades tab and the chat, the chat tab. The grades tab keeps an up-to-date list of all of your grades in this course in, for the entire semester. It will tell you your percentage and the letter grade that's associated with it. Whatever you see in the grade book is your official grade and it is accurate up to the point of the things that have been submitted and graded. And at the end of the semester, if it says it's a B minus, your grade is a B minus. The only exception to this is if you, um, Let's say that you had an 89.498. I would round that up to an 89.5, and I would say an 89.5 is an A minus. And so instead of a B plus, your grade would be an A minus because the rounding, Canvas doesn't say, oh, that should round up. It just says, oh, that's an 89.49. That's not an 89.5. And last, the chat tab is a resource for you to leave messages for me, but it's public, so make sure that whatever you post in the chat, you are not afraid that someone else could see it. I host my online office hours in the course chat, so you can log in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8.30 to 9.30 and chat with me in real time, or you can leave messages in here, and the next time I have online office hours, I'll log into the chat, I'll see your question, and I'll answer it. So, for example, if you're working on Sunday night and I'm not logged into the course and you have a question and you think, well, Jessica's going to log in tomorrow morning at 8.30, you can just leave that question inside the chat. When I log in at 8.30, I'll answer it. And then maybe you have class until noon on Monday 
After you get out of class, you can log into the chat and you'll see my response. But keep in mind that I only log into the chat during online office hours, so that's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8.30 to 9.30.